next material we're going to look at is called polyether. Uh, polyether, again, is one of the impression materials that you use for a permanent restoration. On my model, I'm not sure if you can see it, but we've got an inlay prep on this um, tooth number 19, and we'll be taking a final impression for that tooth, for that inlay. Again, we have a adhesive that is specific for our polyether, and we have an impression tray that doesn't have any perforations in it, so that the material with the adhesive will stay in the tray. So you want to paint all the surfaces of the inside of the tray. Paint the edges. You would do this after you have tried the tray in the patient's mouth to make sure that it's going to fit because you don't want to um, place this wet adhesive in the patient's mouth without the impression material over the top of it. Get good coverage. By the time that we mix our material and get it ready to use, that adhesive will be dry. Again, this is mixed on a pad. The difference in this material and the polysulfide, other than the uh, chemistry of it, is that you would be using this for a fixed restoration as opposed to a removable restoration, mostly. And you would have to have some means to deliver the material off the pad into the patient's mouth and inject around so that we could get a really detailed impression in that prep. So we can use a disposable syringe or you may see some offices that have these reusable syringes and I'll show you how to use both of them. I'll work with the disposable one first. So I want enough impression material on my pad to fill this tray and also put some in the syringe. So measure out equal lengths of base. This is the base. And you can see I'm not, I'm just kind of letting it go out of the tube the size of the hole. I'm not backing it up on itself. There's my base. You always want to make sure that you don't leave a mess for the next person. So I would wipe this off and make sure that the top is put on securely. Okay. This is one of the prettier impression materials because you can see that that's kind of gray looking, but our catalyst, which is in a tiny tube, is red. So when we mix them together, we're going to get a pretty, pretty purple material. So again, I'm using equal lengths, not equal amounts. And just as before, we're going to put all the catalyst on the spatula first and then mix it into the base. Try to keep all of these materials, when you mix a material like this, try to keep it all on one side of the spatula. Because that way when you're checking for streaks to see if your mix is complete, then you won't have some that's not mixed on one side of the spatula and some that is on the other. I've still got some red streaks in it, so I'll continue mixing. Turn this around so I can hold the loose end of the tablet, the pad. To get it off the spatula, you just kind of back the spatula up and then continue to mix. Putting some pressure on the pad. Got a 
good homogeneous mix. In order to fill this syringe, I'm going to use this part of it, not the plunger, but the syringe part. And I'm just going to, this is called walking the material up into the syringe. So I would fill about this much of the syringe with the material and hand it to the doctor. Sometimes the doctor likes for you to bev or turn that tip so it's got a little curvature to it. But the doctor's going to be injecting that material around the tooth while you're loading the tray. And obviously I'm working down the patient's throat. We would have it. You wouldn't have the same angle. Right. So the prep is covered. The adjacent teeth are covered. While he's doing that or she's doing that, I'm going to be loading the compression tray then passing it to the doctor like this, and the doctor will see it in the patient's mouth. Then it's your turn to hold the impression for a little bit until the material is set. These impression materials, these elastomeric impression materials, clean up a lot better off the spatula and off of everything else if you will let them set, let the material set before you attempt to clean it up similar to what we did with alginate. Remember, that was a lot easier to clean up if we let the material set. Um, also, we have to be very careful with these impression materials because they will ruin your patient's clothes or your clothes. So you want to always um, wear gloves, obviously when working in the patient's mouth, but there are some different kinds of barriers other than just the patient napkin that you can put over the patient's clothes when you're taking these final impressions that will give them a little bit more protection. So we'll wait for just a minute until that sets. Doesn't take quite as long as the polysulfide, but it still takes a little bit of time. And again, the dental assistant would be holding the tray in place. Okay, we've waited long enough for the material to set, and it can be removed from the patient's mouth. And don't be alarmed if some of the teeth off this dental form come out in this material because it's happened before. But we'll remove it from the patient's mouth easily, carefully. <laughs> and all the teeth came out. This would not, should not happen with your patient forbid. So we would put these back into our dental form. There's our prep. Took out the whole quadrant. So the doctor would look very closely and very carefully to make sure that there were no bubbles or voids in the area of the prep or the impression. If there was, you would have to take another impression. Um, this material likes for the uh, area to be dry, but it is a little bit more forgiving with some moisture. It's, it's not hydrophobic, it's hydrophilic. So it's not scared of water, but it is uh, adaptable to so we would get that ready for the lab. I was going to show you how to clean up from that initial mix. You get a 4x4 four four, and the material will kind of just peel off your spatula. So you peel the bulk of it off. handle too. And then there's a solution called orange oil or orange solvent that will remove the residue from the spatula. It smells really, really good. But you can see it has an oily base or, or oily sheen to it. But it helps break down the bond with the 
um, material, the adhesive, I mean, not the adhesive, the impression material, has to this batch. And it takes a little bit of work sometimes to get it clean, but you always want to clean it between each use and not let it build up over time. Go. We've got basically a clean spatula to start with. We would sterilize it for our, another patient use. The other thing I wanted to show you with polyether is that we talked about it a few minutes ago that you could use a syringe that's not disposable. And that's what this one looks like. It has a tip that's disposable, but the syringe itself is not. And I'll show you how to, with just a little bit of a mix, how to load this syringe. Again, I'm going to mix it the same way. These pads have a loose edge, so if you hold the pad down to the table by the loose edge, you don't end up making such a big mess with it. One side of the spatula. My wrist is moving back and forth, back and forth. Okay. All right, so I get it up in the pile again. This time I would use this edge of the spatula, I mean the syringe, and again, I'm going to walk it up. And I am missing a key component, and I will be back in just a second. There's a nut that goes on the end of that syringe. So you would put the tip on, secure the nut, turn it all the way, because you don't want the syringe tip popping off and uh, the doctor not being happy with you. But you can see that you can eject it the same way. You always seem to have a malfunction here. It may be the tip, it's got a crack in it. But we could still get it around the tooth, but you can see that there's a lot of excess there. The challenge with these syringes is cleaning them, obviously. Again, you're going to leave it until the material is set, until it um, reaches it, its final set. And then you would take the screw tip off, dispose of the plastic tip, pull the plunger out, and then use a brush to clean down in it and clean all components of the syringe. Disposable syringes certainly are more convenient because you can just throw them away, but they're not as cost effective as the other syringes. So this is polyether, and this is the type of material you would, might see in your office. On page 256 in your textbook, there's a machine called an Automix, and you basically have two large tubes of the polyether in the, inside the machine, and all you do is express just depress a button and the material would express out of the mixing tip. So that's a convenience that some offices have and you may see that. But polyether is, is one of the least messy to, to work with even though it seems pretty messy today.